praises to Yahweh Barsham Yahweh Shai. All praises to Yahweh Barsham Yahweh Shai. Barsham Rakha Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And Shalom to the elect to the nation of Israel. This is going to be a lesson on how the day is going to come where every single Israelite is unified in terms of their moral code. Right? Not in terms of what type of women they like not in terms of not in terms of what food they like not in terms of what they like what kind of clothes they like to wear right not in ter not in you in unified in those kind of things because those kind of things you're allowed to be of your own choosing but when it comes to in terms of what's righteous or not then in 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 the kingdom of heaven we're all going to be unified man when we're under the new covenant we're all going to be unified in terms of what we think is righteous, man. Because in this world right now, right, you'll have some, you'll have some grimy adulterer in a, a grimy adulterous pastor in a church, right, looking down on, on um gang members selling drugs in the neighborhood, but the crimes that the gang members did, right, and the things that he's doing, and the crimes and the wickedness that the adulterous pastor is doing in the church are both worthy of death. According to Yahweh's laws. But the church pastor will be thinking that he's better because he ain't selling drugs. When really, they're both doing wickedness. Right? But the time's going to come where every single Israelite all over the earth is going to be unified in righteousness, man. There ain't going to be no Israelite that's that's um, wicked and another one righteous. They're all going to be righteous in that time. I just need to find the scripture that I was looking for. Well, like this, this scripture will work. Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 21. Yahweh is well pleased for right for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honourable. And the way how the law is going to be magnified and be made honourable is because the Israelites are going to be keeping, perf keeping it perfectly. Plus, they're also going to be used as a rod of iron and, a, as, and as a, a rod of correction against the heathen nations to make sure that they keep it as well. So, therefore... When the world's like that, everyone's going to be keeping the law perfectly. Now, there's another scripture that I was looking for where it says, I think it was in Isaiah 60, but I couldn't, I didn't just see it then when I looked. So let me try again and see if I can see it in there. Where it says, Thy people shall all be righteous. Here we go. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 21. Thy people all shall, shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the Lord, they shall inherit the land forever, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. So all the Israelites, the day is going to come where every Israelite is righteous, man. Every single one, right? But before that happens, a large portion of Israelites are going to have to perish. But in even, even in that happening, every single Israelite is going to receive mercy. And that's the thing that these Christians don't know about, man. They, they think that Yahweh is going to save a remnant of Israel in terms of like an, a specific number that you can mention, the 144,000, but then a multitude that of innumerable Gentiles that also didn't keep the law. That's what they actually think. Their, their doctrine is ridiculous when you actually listen to it, man. It doesn't make any sense, but let me, let me stay on the doctrine that we believe in. Romans chapter 11 and verse 25, for I would not, brethren, that you should... Be ignorant of this mystery, that you should be wise in your own conceits. That blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fulfillment of the Gentiles or the ethnos be come in. And that those Gentiles or that ethnos are other Israelites, man. Right? Blindness has happened to the Israelites. Right? Blindness is happening to the, to the... Let me read it again. Blindness has happened to the Israelites in part. Right? So some of the Israelites are blind. A large portion of them are blind. Until... A specific number of Israelites that are going to repent come in. And then when all that those Israelites, which is the elect being sealed, it, it's sealed. But then the day of the Lord comes. And when the day of the Lord comes, then the blinding that's happened to all of those Israelites is going to be taken off. But then when it gets taken off, those same Israelites that didn't believe are going to have to die by pain. But then they come back again anyway. Verse 26. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer. And shall turn away on godliness from Jacob. So therefore, no Israelite is going to be wicked in that day. There's not going to be no ever Israelite that's going to have to tell me 
you know it's a Sabbath soon coming up, right? Because right now, sometimes we might learn when Sabbath's coming up or coming up from things that brothers put out there, man, and it's good, you know? We'll learn exactly the specific day when we believe that the Passover is not when anyone else believes. We've got a specific day and time that we believe when with the teachers that we follow. We've got a specific time that we believe that the Passover is supposed to be. Now, if we're wrong on that, and another and another group of people are right. Well, fair enough. But ultimately, even if even if you were sp to pick the very specific exact time according to the law when you're supposed to keep the Passover anyway, you still ain't keeping it properly because that lamb that you're getting is more than likely not even a whole lamb anyway. So it's not of a thing for anyone to get over righteous in terms of when they're keeping the Passover, right? Because even when you do, if you do keep the Passover on a specific time, you ain't keeping it properly one hundred percent. According to the law, you're doing the best you can do according to the spirit, man. According to your particular life and where you are in the world, right? Because if someone had the ability to get their own lamb, <clears throat> right? And to keep it separate for a year and all of these things that you need to do and to do it exactly of the year age without blemishes and all of these things and to separate it prior to the Passover coming up and they didn't do it, well, then you could say that that person's going off because they've got the ability to do it. And they're deliberately not doing it. Whereas if someone's going to have to end up getting their lamb from the shop or from the butcher and they don't know what defects that lamb might have had, well, at least they're trying, man. At least they're trying. But the day is going to come where all of these things, according to the law, we're going to do them perfectly, man. And the law is hard to keep. If it wasn't hard to keep, right, we would have never broke it. Right? We would have kept it all the time. If our flesh wasn't wicked, we would have never, we would have never sinned. Therefore, we would have never went under the curse of man. But it is wicked, though. Verse twenty six, and so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. And that's Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is gonna change the Israelites so that they're like how he is. He's gonna fashion them according to his glorious body. Verse twenty seven, for this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away. Their sins and the sins are going to be taken away from us. And then they're never going to be replaced by new sins because we're never going to sin again after that. So so I don't understand where these Christians have got it from that we are um, not forgiven as Israelites. It's ridiculous. The adoption that they've made is all over the place. Now, let me get this. Romans chapter 11 and verse 34. As ye in times past have not believed Yahweh, yet now have obtained mercy through their unbelief. So there's a certain amount of people now, the elect, that they believe, right? But other Israelites are not believing, right? For as ye in times past have not believed, yet now have obtained mercy through their unbelief in the times past in our lives, even in our lives now, we didn't really believe in God like we said we did, like we say we do now. We didn't really believe in the Lord like that. If we wanted a bacon sandwich, even before in the past when we said we believed in God, because it's not like we were completely godless people that we didn't believe in any kind of higher power. But we didn't care about if we was going to eat a pork. We'd eat it. Or we, and even in time, when we might have believed in the Lord in the past. And we still might have seen a woman that's with a man. But she's attractive to us. We'd not turn away our eyes from looking at her. But now in the world, we will turn our eyes away from looking at this woman. Right? We'll, we'll gradually try and take away more and more things away from our lives. And not do certain things because we believe in the Lord. So through the belief that we have, right, we're obtaining mercy because we're at least showing more faith than those other people that they don't believe at all, man. For as ye in times past have not believed, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief, even so, even so these also now not believed that through your mercy, they may also obtain mercy. So really, what are these Israelites that have got a problem with brothers believing in the Lord? They don't even know what they're doing because through them believing in the Lord, they're going to ultimately receive mercy because the Israelite nation is not going to be exterminated, man. Just like how through Yahweh Shai, going through everything that Yahweh Shai went through, every single Israelite is, has received mercy as a whole. But if all them Israelites that was trying to stop Yahweh Shai doing what he was doing, they didn't even know what the hell they was doing, which is why Yahweh Shai said exactly that about them. Forgive them, Father, because they don't know what they're doing. That's roughly paraphrasing what he said. He said, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. Because if he wouldn't have died as a sacrifice, then we'd have all been done for. 
Just like how if right now Israelites don't end up believing in Yahweh by Sham Shai, then all the donations done for it anyway. And there's a few scriptures that I'm going to read in a minute that explain that further. Verse 32, for Yahweh have concluded them all in unbelief that he might have mercy upon all because if you break any law, really, you're supposed to die. And that's why it's ridiculous, man, when you've got Israelites out there that are saying that they've never sinned or that they don't sin anymore. Oh, I sinned in the past, but now I don't sin anymore. Why are you lying for? Who do you really think you deceive when you say that, man? Who do you really think you, do you, do you really think that anyone believes that you that when you say that? That when you say that you ain't sinning because you got fringes on, that that's actually true. That's not true. And you know it's not true, but you have to try and put an overly righteous image on you for you to be able to even want to come out your house at night or come out your house in, in a day and feel like you can even teach it on you. feel like you have to be 100% perfect to be able to say anything to anybody. That's why you, that's the only reason why somebody's going to try and lie and say that they haven't sinned, man, when it's not true and they know it's not. They know it's not true. They literally know that it's not true, that they haven't sinned, but they feel the need to say that. Verse 33, all the depth of the riches boast of, of the wisdom and knowledge of Yahweh, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who have known the mind of Yahweh or who have been his counsellor, right? And that's the deep thing, man, because Yahweh is ultimately having mercy on every Israelite and the Israelites that make it, it's not because of nothing that they did of their own self. It's not because of their particular skills. Because Yahweh programmed the works that they do in them. Anything that they've ever did that's been worthy for them to even receive mercy wasn't their own doing. Yahweh made them do it. And anything that the two thirds did, right, that's going to make them get destroyed. That ultimately is not of their own doing, man. But yet still, even knowing that, you'd rather, if you had a choice, You'd rather you have chose you to be one of those ones that are going to do the right things than one of those ones that are going to do the wrong thing. But it ain't our choice. But if we had the choice, then every single Israelite would obviously have wanted to be one of the ones that didn't go off. Right? If Judas had a choice to have did what he did or to have been like Peter, he would have chose what he did. I mean, what, what Peter did, right? And if Saul would have had the choice to be like what he was, or to be like what King David was a bit would have been like, he would have chose to be like King David, but he didn't have the choice, right? He didn't have the choice, man. Yahweh chose him to be like that and chose King David to be like what he's like, man. Ephesians chapter two and verse eight: For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of Yahweh, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So there ain't gonna be no one on the chariot saying, "I told y'all, I told y'all, jiggers." That I was de-elect. I told y'all, like, just saying I knew, I told y'all, you all doubted me. And I, there ain't going to be none of that. Because Yahweh is going to purge any kind of remnant of pride that a man could have to think it and say anything like that out of him, man. So that that man's just on that chariot or that woman's just on that chariot, grateful to be there. You know? That they're just grateful to be on there. And that's why the righteous are going to be scarcely be saved. So that they, all their pride can be removed even to still remnants of pride that might be in, in them now, man. It's going to be a thing where they're going to be like, man, I just about made it, man. It felt like I just about made it there. And that's where every Israelite is going to be grateful to be in the kingdom, man. And and all the Israelites that make it into the kingdom are going to be of the elect because there ain't going to be no one that's not elected that's going to be making it through. So then it's going to be only righteous Israelites that are going to be the future parents of the kingdom. Right? Everyone's everyone's gonna be a descendant of one of the elect in the kingdom. All the men that all the men that are gonna make it and have children and that people are gonna come from in the kingdom are gonna be sons of one of the elect. They're gonna they're gonna go through that line in some way, shape, or form. There's gonna be a whole new lineage is formed, man. Right? The former lineages are gonna be done away with and it's gonna be new lineages and lines, man. In the kingdom, pretty much, you're gonna be whatever your whatever your father is was gonna be one of those that was of the elect, and people will still remember what they did in the kingdom because everyone Israelites gonna remember even it's in the scriptures. Every Israelite's gonna remember their wicked works, man. 
which is going to be another thing that's going to take away their pride. But they're all going to know. They're all going to be of a different line, man, of 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 new lineages. They're going to have been born through men and women that were of the elect, but more, more importantly, through a man that was of the elect. And that's going to be their father, and that's going to become their line. So the scoffers are going to be born back through the same people that they were scoffing against. Isn't that, isn't that fascinating? Doesn't that show the power of the Lord? Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 9, Not of works, lest any man should boast, for, he, for we are his workmanship, created in the Mashiach Yahweh Sharon to good works, which Yahweh before have ordained that we should walk in them. So anything that anyone's ever did that was righteous, to, that's going to make them get beamed up. Yahweh made them do it, man. When Yahweh Shai was doing his things that he was doing, all his miracles, he was doing it to glorify Yahweh. And he was deliberately doing certain things while he was on the earth so that prophecy could be fulfilled. It even goes into it, the scripture says, this was done so that this prophecy could be fulfilled. This was done so that that prophecy could be fulfilled. And that's why it's so funny when people in this world talk about, oh, that was back in Bible times, right? Because prophecy means that we're always in Bible times, right? The fact that we're waiting for prophecies to happen on earth means that we're always in Bible times. Revelation 13 and verse 16 to verse 17, that's going to be Bible times. World War Three taking place, that's going to be Bible times. Martial law taking place on the earth and people running around having riots and chaos, that's going to be Bible times. The second coming of Yahweh Shai, that's Bible times. There ain't no time on the earth that ain't Bible times or ain't Yahweh's time. But because people don't believe in the scriptures and they think, oh, that's just a made up thing that people talk about. In the kingdom, right, when we've been tens of thousands of years into the kingdom of heaven, unless there was people that lived through that time, which there is going to be, the elect, right, people wouldn't believe that we was living in these times now. They were like, nah, you was never living in a place where these, where there was some people called Edomites ruling that didn't believe in the Lord, that was trying to put things, technology and everyone to control them. Now, nah, I don't believe that because how would they have been able to do that to us and make us be so weak when we can fly and bring fire out of our hands and all this crazy stuff that we can do? I don't believe that. Or, or, or all those Israelites that are going to be born in that time that are going to be so righteous, right? And the women are women that are going to be so righteous. They ain't going to believe that our women were just twerking on, on moving Cadillac cars and that in Miami, twerking on the on the car bonnet and that. They ain't going to believe that there was no kind of person like Sexy Red or Suki Hunter. The women, Israelite women, they're not going to believe that that existed unless they lived through that time. The ones that lived through that time, they're going to believe it, but all the others, they're not going to believe that that existed. They're going to be like, nah, because I would never do that. But yeah, it did happen. So all you people that don't think that the Bible happened, don't think that the Bible happened, you don't know what you're talking about, man. But anyway, so Lockyer, let me read this because there's a prophecy that speaks about how the Israelites are going to get one heart and one way. Jeremiah chapter 32 and verse 37, Behold, I will gather them out of all countries, whither I had driven them in mine anger and in my fury and in great wrath, and I will bring them again into this, onto this place and will cause them to dwell safely. Which that obviously ain't talking about those people in the land right now because they ain't safe over there. They ran out the land, right? They ran out the land, some of them, to go to Babylon, the great. So it can't be that safe. Because if it was the safest land, then surely people would run from other places in the world to go there, right? But that ain't how it goes, is it? And they shall be my people and I will be their power and I will give them one heart and one way. Right, all the Israelites in that time are going to have one mind in terms of righteousness to live according to exactly the same way that they may fear me forever for the good of them and of their children after them. And I'll make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from them to do them good, but I'll put my fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me. So the Israelites are going to be keeping Yahweh's laws all the time. Now, can those people in the land of Israel say that, or will there be some that say? I'm a I'm 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 a Jew, but I'm non-practicing. But where's that in the scriptures that you're going to be living in the land of return for the second time again and all that and fulfilled Ezekiel 36, but you're not practicing? Where's that? 
what where what prophecy is that, man? Or is that just them again making things up? And all these Christians that are so deep in the Bible to try and rebuke us when we say we're Israelites, but they don't even know how the Israelites are supposed to live. I find it fascinating that people that claim to care about the Bible so much only have scrutiny to care about the true identity of what Israelites are supposed to be when some black men are saying it, when some Latino men are saying it, and when some Native American men are saying it. But when anyone else says it, they don't have the same size magnifying glass to be looking and examining everything, man. They just look at it with a naked eye when when anyone else says it. But then when we say it, they pull out a magnifying glass. They want DNA results. They want us with a picture sitting on sitting next to Abraham. They want to see they want to see our lineage with King David written in there. You know what I mean? They want our name to be written in the scriptures. They want us to do a damn 23 and me and all that. They want everything under the sun. They want to know if we was born there. They want to say, where was you born and all that. They want to know what our, whether our mom is one. Not even our father. They want to know about our mom and all that. But when anyone else says that they are, as long as they've got one of them stupid hats on their head, one of them stupid tea, co tea cozies, man. Then all of a sudden, yeah, yeah, he is. Sounds about right. Yeah, he is. It's ridiculous. But anyway, let me read this, man. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 10. And this is what the new covenant is. And this is what you won't see Christians read. They don't read it, man. You don't really see any Christians read this. And it's not hard to understand. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith Yahweh, I'll put my laws into their mind. And write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a power. And they shall be to me a people. So what's hard to understand about that man? What's, what's, what's hard to understand about that? Verse 11. And they shall not cheat every man his neighbour. And every man his brother saying know the Lord. For all shall know me from the least to the greatest. And that goes into them having one heart. And one way. Because every single Israelite is going to understand the moral code. We're going to know how we are supposed to live. We're going to know. Oh that's his wife. Well, it ain't going to be your wife then, is it? Oh, that's his cow? Well, it ain't going to be your cow. Oh, that's his house? Well, it ain't your house then. Oh, that's his wife? Well, you can't make her be your wife then. We're going to know. Oh, that's his land? Well, then you can't try and breach onto his border and make it be your land. We're going to know the laws. Oh, that's pork. Okay, you can't eat it. Okay, that animal hasn't got fins and scales. Well, you can't eat it then. Okay, you, you like that. You, you wanted that haircut. But that haircut requires you to mar the corners of your head. Well, you can't have that haircut then. You want to trim your beard. Okay, but you can't shave it off then. You can trim it. We're all going to know the right way, man. Among us. It's going to be these other people on the earth that they're going to be the ones messing up all the time. And we're going to have to make sure that they don't mess up. Because we don't want them ruining and polluting the earth that we live on. We don't want them, to, we ain't going to want to be able to, if, if they start messing up and, and sinning, right? Then that means that they're not going to be able to serve us properly. If they're going off. Because we ain't going to want them around us being wicked with stains on them, man. We ain't going to want no sinful people being our servants. We're going to want righteous people serving us. And they ain't going to be able to be serving us, working among our houses and among our lands, sinning and going off. If we're going to have pigs on our land, that pig's there for the pig's purpose. It's not there for you to try and turn it, make it into a statue or try and worship it in the back garden and that, or eat it on the sly. No, that's there to do pig things, man. And we're going to have the true understanding of everything that a pig's supposed to do in the kingdom of heaven. We're going to have the full understanding of all of that. Yahweh is going to teach us things. Yahweh Bar Shem is going to teach us things about his creation that you people ain't going to know, man. That's for us to know. Right, immortal people are the only ones that need to know all knowledge. People that ain't going to live forever don't need to know everything about the world, man. They don't need to worry about that. They don't need to burden themselves 
with such things because they've got a they've got a sand timer ticking away on their life, man. But yet they're still gonna know and learn how to follow Yahweh's laws properly. And if they decide that they don't want to, well, then there's punishments for that. And I'm gonna read one of them. There's punishments for it, man. Let's read it. Zechariah chapter 14 and verse 18. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not, that that they have no rain, there shall be a plague with Yahweh will smite the heathen that come up not to keep the feast of tabernacles. This shall be the plague of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. So they're going to be keeping the laws. And they, they, they're going to try and get on a hype and get proud. We expect them to do that. When then, and then they're going to expect no rain. At first, they're going to think, nah, they can't stop the rain because we've made this statue. We've made this rain god. So we're going to dance around this rain god for 55,000 laps or whatever they're going to try and do. We're going to bounce, dance around this rain god for five laps. But we're going to all stay the same pace. Otherwise, he's not going to work. He's not going to bless us with it. They're going to come up with some stupid thing in their head that whatever babbling fool of the time he's going to make up in his mind, right? And they're going to think that that's going to be able to stop, going to be able to make them get rain. And it's not going to work. And then they're going to remember again, okay, Yahweh is the only God that exists. And then there'll be another time when they're going to try the same, when some other heathen is going to try and rise up and think he can try it. Oh, nah. We used to have this God. The rumors have been getting passed down about this God that we used to have. And he can over override that particular thing. So we don't need to keep that Feast of Tabernacles. And again, it's not going to work. Then the nations are going to be humbled again. Right? These are the kind of things that I, I'm expecting to see happen, man. Like whether it's not going to necessarily happen in this kind of way, but these are some of the things that's going to happen because the, the heathen nations are not going to be keeping the law like us. Right? But eventually after certain generations get humbled, and then those people that got humbled among the heathen die and perish. And the remembrance of how powerful we are as Israelites perishes from their mind. Eventually, again, they're going to get proud again. Even though they're going to see all the stuff that we can do, they're still going to move proud on certain levels to a certain degree every now and again. Even though they're going to realize that we're way more righteous, they're not going to have the laws in them like we are. So they're going to still get rebellious and bogged out, man. It's just going to happen. We we did that, right? As Israelites, we did that. We saw Yahweh do all manner of things. We saw Yahweh split the sea, right? We saw Yahweh split the sea in the Exodus. And after we came out of there, us as Israelites, the best nation in the world, we was talking about going back to Egypt for watermelon. So you think these heathen nations ain't going to see Israelites fly and do all kind of crazy show, all kind of crazy power, and then say, okay, that was cool, but I'm trying to see what this thing's saying here. They're going to do that. Because we've did that as Israelites several times. So why would these heathens not bug out on all these times that they're going to do what they're doing, man? And that's why we're going to have to continually keep correcting them, man. We're going to become the Earth's managers. And so lucky if I was doing a lot of talking, man. But to think on the kingdom is a beautiful thing to do, man. Because to rule is, is a great honour. Do on chapter 4 and verse 6, keep um, verse 5. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as you how my power commanded me that you should do so in the land where you go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. And that's why us keeping the laws all the time is going to be a continual reminder to the heathen as to why their way ain't better than ours. Because they're going to continually try and do the, do things their own way, right? And then they're going to compare their way to what we're doing. And every single time they try and make the comparison, they're going to see our ways better than theirs. Every single time. Every single time they try and add pork into their diet, but they compare their diet to us, they're going to look at us and they're going to look at them. Then they're going to look at us again and then look are going to look at themselves and they're going to be like, hang on, we may as well do what they're doing. That's why we ain't supposed to eat pork. We're going to be the reminder. That's why you ain't supposed to shave your head. That's why the women ain't supposed to be harlots. That's why a man can have multiple wives. Look at how their lives are going. And then we're going to, like in this world right now, right? 
whenever women bog out in this world and they always want to talk about oh, this, this and that, they always try and look at whatever celebrity. Oh, but this celebrity's life's like this. Well, in the kingdom of heaven, we're going to be that kind of people. The Israelites are going to be that. The Israelites are going to be the comparison for all these other people, man. Whereas in this world right now, our women might try and compare their life to some Cardi B or some bogged out person like that. Or some Kim Kardashian or something like that. But in the kingdom, the heathen are going to compare, are going to use the Israelites as a comparison. This is why we need to do this. Verse 7. For what nation is there so great that have Yahweh so nigh unto them, as Yahweh our power is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that have statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I have set before you this day? And even right now, what nation, what, what group of people on this earth do we see that they've got a certain law that we can say that that's better than what we've got in the scriptures? We, ain't, we can't see it nowhere. Even when we see certain things happen to these people in this world, or when we see certain things on the news, we think about the scriptures, how, how the laws of the scriptures, the laws of Yahweh, would make that situation go away real quick. Like all this alphabeting and rainbowing that's going on in this world, we already know according to the law how you handle that situation. That's easy. And it would make the world a better place. And it would instill fear into all people on the earth so that they know that you have to accept reality and that those kind of perverse ways always end up leading to more and a bigger perverted individual rising up out of the mist, man. Because one freaky person ends up giving birth to another one. And that ends up giving birth to a next one and a next one and a next one to the point where reality becomes a thing that's people, that people rarely want to speak about, man. And nobody knows what anything is anymore. They don't know what a woman is. They don't know what anything is. And you end up living in a world full of weirdos like we're living in right now. I think I made the, more than made the point, man, on how in the kingdom... Every single Israelite is going to have a unified way of being, man. They're all going to keep the laws perfectly. And I'll get this scripture as well. <clears throat> because the new covenant's been getting mentioned from in the Torah. Do on the chapter 30 and verse 6. And Yahweh, will, and Yahweh thy power will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love Yahweh thy power with all thine heart and with all thy soul. And that's done by keeping the laws, right? With all thy heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. Verse 8, and thou shalt return and obey the voice of Yahweh thy power and do all his commandments which I command thee this day. Right? So the time's going to come where every single Israelite is going to just keep the laws. There ain't going to be no, oh, I don't feel like it today. I'm going off. You're just going to keep them all, all the time. And that's the best way because when you do that, Yahweh ain't got a need to punish you. And just like how as men on, men on the earth, if you have women around you or whatever, right? Or you have children. When your children or your woman are acting right according to what you think is the right way, then do you not feel like you want to bless them and give them all of your substance that would help their life? But then when they're not, then you don't feel like you want to, want to aid them in those kind of ways, right? Apart from the basic things. And that's the same thing with how it will be, how it will be, and how it is with how you how it treats us, man. And now I'm gonna end the lesson there, man. All praises to Yahweh by Shami Hawa Shai, by Shamakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And Shalawam to the elected nation of Israel. Shalawam.